Just as an interlude between benchmarks and tips of the big brother, I have the chance to own a brand new Surface Pro 7 from Microsoft, the i5 one, which is the highest tier among the fanless lineup. Yes, because if you go the i7, you then have to keep up with the noisy, whirling small fan, while this has not. What type of i5 is in there? Well, for once it is finally a 10 nanometers Intel CPU, no more 14 plus 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 manufacturing, it's an Ice Lake CPU. I do know it is now entering the market the Surface Pro 7 Plus, which has the 11th generation. In comparison to this one, it has a slight bump in frequency and a more robust iGPU. However, the Ice Lake iGPU inside mine is still pretty strong compared to the UHD old integrated graphics you were used to find in the 14 nanometer Skylake and its refreshes. You'll see in some benchmarks soon, it's pretty capable of the normal gaming, like Minecraft or Team Fortress 2, exceeding 100 FPS if you want. While I speak, you can see the small footprint of this machine, no fun, again, pretty functional and solid keyboard and pen, very very sturdy aluminium case, very sturdy also the stand, with its infinite angles of rotation. This machine has a real SSD, unfortunately in my option only 128GB, so I have installed TF2 in a microSD formatted in NTFS, no problem. The same can happen for your OneDrive folder, your documents, etc. At this point, for OS and programs, I don't see much of a problem going 128GB, it's plenty. Screen is above 12 inches with a 3 by 2 ratio and a very high 2736 by 1824 pixels. It's higher than my Yonigo Max 17 QHD display, yet it's limited to 60 Hz for obvious reasons, but with the touch and digitizer, it's plenty. Now, time to benchmark Minecraft Bedrock Edition. It's the Windows Store Edition, and of course we can't set ray tracing on this thing. But it's running at native resolution, and still solid 60 FPS, as you can see from the stats in the upper part of the screen. Remember the crazy resolution this puppy has. The new Iris graphics of Ice Lake has no fear. You can see some dips into the 40 FPS, but still reasonable. If you want to play on the couch, touch controls are perfect for a Minecraft session. Remember, this laptop is fanless, so any thermal dissipation must be handled by the aluminium body. At one point, for some games, as you'll see soon, it might throttle. The sustained power limit lowers, and in some cases, what you see initially is not the sustained FPS after some minutes. But that does not seem the case for Minecraft. Solid 60 FPS across the board.
time to launch Team Fortress 2 then. Remember, I'm running it via microSD, a pretty small 32GB one I had laying around. First, on an empty map with maxed out graphics settings at Full HD 1200p vertical resolution. This thing at the beginning, which PL2 higher than sustained power levels, pushes a lot of frames, more than 120 easily. Screen is not for gaming, response time is around 30 milliseconds, but for the 60Hz refresh rate is acceptable. Gaming on the go for the win. As expected, after a while PL1 kicks in and you can't exceed 80-100 FPS on an empty map. If you fix 60 Hz via vertical sync, experience is solid and probably laptop ceases to heat up to the maximum. Now let's see in a real casual server, 24 versus 24 people to move around. FPS dips. On same max settings 1200p it goes as low as 30 FPS. We need a change in resolution. At HD ready, 1280 by 800 is the answer. Now back to 60 FPS table and more. In fact, if we uncap the FPS again, it shows this resolution can offer as high as 120, also 170 FPS, frankly unneeded. Power level sustained, it keeps above 90 FPS, no problem. I suggest keeping VSync on and get that solid 60 FPS experience with laptop not heating up much. Frankly. HD ready on a minuscule 12 inch is perfectly viable. I have paired it with a wonderful pair of Bluetooth headset Sretum NC35 with the same coral accent. Any question about this puppy? Leave it in the comments. And thanks for watching.